Hello. So the purpose of this video is to give you a little bit of background uh, on the SendGrid platform and help you get started using it. So first of all, how do we get here? We've built some software for your company and that software has a need to send out email. From a user experience standpoint, if you're if the software sending out emails that appear to come from you it's important that they come from your domain or something close to it everybody now checks the domain the originating domain of email that they receive so it's important that we send e out emails that are branded with your with your domain name at that point your internal it might start to worry about what access that would mean we would need to your existing systems well the good news is with SendGrid, we have zero access to your systems in order to enable this to work. You create a corporate SendGrid account and then provide us with an access key. That's just like a piece of text. You remain in control of that and you can revoke that at any time. So SendGrid is essentially a, a very high quality service that sends billions of emails every month on behalf of thousands and thousands of businesses. Um, they're very focused on keeping bad actors off their platform and the reason for that is they want to retain their excellent reputation that they have um, so that emails that originate from them are much more likely to end up in people's inboxes versus their spam folders or just being completely uh, deleted so what do we need to do? The first thing you need to do, and what this video will show, is you'll create a corporate account on Stangrid for your company. You then need to add a payment method. And finally, the most important part, and the part that catches people out, you have to prove to Stangrid that you're the rightful owner of your domain. That's the protection against uh, anybody just simply creating a Stangrid account calling themselves bankofamerica.com and sending out emails that look like they come from bankofamerica.com. And that is the part that catches you up. Until you do those three steps, um, SendGrid won't allow emails to be sent other than in very small quantities, and they won't allow emails to be sent under your domain. So this is what catches people up. This is what the video is hopefully going to uh, uh, provide, shed some light on. Once you've done all that, you then generate an access key. You provide us with that, which is it's basically a long piece of, of text. We add that into our software platform, and instantly we can start sending out emails um, from your domain. Uh, and as we said before, uh, if at any point you, you wish, you simply go into SendGrid, you can revoke that access key, and we'll then not be able to send emails that appear to come from you. Okay, so the first step is to go ahead and create a SendGrid account. Okay, so head over to SendGrid.com and click the Start for Free button. Put in your email address. Now I am going to set it up for I'm going to set it up for us. You probably want to give a secure password, set the terms of service, and create account. So you just answer some basic questions, get started.
Okay, so that immediately we, you log in, you're given the option to go ahead and authenticate a domain. So we're going to select that option. The first thing they need to know is who is what is is what company your domain is hosted at. So if you look at the options, you may well have heard of some of these. Your tech will definitely know. Um, so you've obviously heard, most people have heard of Namecheap, GoDaddy, Rackspace. We actually use Cloudflare for fpfxtech.io. That's the domain that I'm going to set up now with, um, with SendGrid. So I'm telling the system to use Cloudflare. And I'm going to tell them fpfxtech.io. Okay. So you enter the domain you want to send from there. That will be your corporate domain. If you look at the advanced settings, I'm going to leave those unchanged. Next. Well, what they're telling you here is that you need to go to your DNS control panel and insert this. Now, they do give you an extremely useful option, send to a co-worker. So I am going to send that to myself. You would typically send that to whoever it is in your organization that has access to your DNS control panel. The DNS control panel is where you tie your company's domain to actual physical servers. So that's that's something that's typically very closely held within a business. Um, whoever's in charge of that will know how to action that email that was just sent. This is the email that your tech is going to receive from SendGrid you would most likely want to give them a heads up that they're going to get this um, because it might raise some red flags. I know it would if I received this. Um, assuming that you've um, given them a heads up to expect this and they get it, they will then click the view DNS records and instructions and SendGrid will tell them what changes they need to make um, to the domain setup to validate to SendGrid satisfaction that your your business is the rightful owner of that domain. So I will show, I will then I'll now proceed to show how this is inserted using Cloudflare, which is our host. Your techs will know how to do it for whatever domain registrar that you're using. So this is an example of how you add the CNAME records in Cloudflare's DNS setup. All uh, DNS providers will have something very, very similar to this. The only important things to keep on uh, keep in mind are to set the the record type to C name. That's what um, that's what SendGrid is looking for. And if you think back to that screen, um, there were two columns and three lines. The left hand column goes in the main box and the contents of the right hand column goes into the target box. You have to turn off the proxy option and you hit save and that's done. And then you simply repeat the process for the other two lines. Um, so that's basically that. So once your tech reports that he's plumb these numbers in, um, you then have to click verify. So you check added records and then click verify. You, you're probably going to want to um, arrange a time when you can actually have the tech do this while you're looking at the screen because um, these, these values in this screen change every time you go into it. So once you go into the screen, you've got to send the information to your tech have him change it and then he'll come back and say yeah it's done and at that point you check this checkbox down here and hit verify what SendGrid's doing now is querying Cloudflare to make sure that the tech finished their job and added those records and in this case they have um, and so we've now successfully validated that the domain is owned by us okay with the domain verified the next thing to do is to set up a 
billing profile. So in order to do that, you click, you go to app.sendwith.com and you click your company name followed by account details and then billing. And you go ahead and insert a payment method and details. Okay, another thing you need to do is turn off link tracking. When you send, when, when the software sends out uh, an email that has URL links in it, we don't want SendGrid changing those to try and do any kind of link tracking. That's not the purpose of this, right? But by default, they seem to be enabling it. So what you'll want to do is go back to app.sendgrid.com, open up the settings um, option down here, and find the tracking option. And when you go in here, you see that open tracking and click tracking are enabled. Well, we, we don't want those. That's just going to add needless complexity. So we're going to turn that off. We're going to uncheck this and we're going to say this is disabled and we're going to save our change so that's now gone gray and we do the top one we're just going to say disabled save we don't want it to add additional uh, stuff into our emails so with that turned off the next step is to go ahead and create the api key uh, that we need to send actual emails programmatically so the final step, create an API key. So once again, we go to app.sendgrid.com. We open up the settings option and click API keys. So up here in the top right, they give you a button to do that. So we really need full access um, for our use case. So you've got to give it a name. So this is, you can create keys using this and give them to any, any, any third parties that you want to have the ability to send email on your behalf. So give it a memorable name so you know who's using it. Okay. You get one chance to make a copy of this and then it's gone forever. So if you click on it, they copy it into the clipboard and you can save it someplace else. And that's done. So here now that screen shows you all the existing keys. Now, incidentally, this key ID isn't the key that is used to send emails. That... Uh, you can never get again. So you can downgrade the permissions that you've given it. You can change its name, but you can never get that key back again. So that shows how to, so we've shown how to open a SendGrid account, validate that you own your domain, create an API key. Those are the things um, that we need and uh, I hope this video um, has, has been uh, been helpful for you. Thanks a lot and goodbye.